And so we're back in the bowels of our power room. No judgment, please. It's not pristine, but it's the power room. Uh, the time has come where I need to do a little bit of maintenance. Now, we've talked, like on the podcast this week, one of the things we mentioned when talking about off-grid solar power systems is that there is a little bit of maintenance involved, perhaps not as much as you might think, but there is some maintenance involved and it pretty much centers around the batteries. And uh, there are a couple other things you could do, um, such as um, adjusting the solar panel angle. And we already did a YouTube video on that. And uh, here's a link up at the top of the screen for uh, where you can watch how you um, do that, depending upon the type of mount that you have for your solar array. That is one very minor piece of maintenance, but the, the bulk of it centers around the batteries. And if you have a bank of lead acid batteries, in other words, the kind of batteries that have a acid solution in them that need to be watered, that's the kind where there is a little maintenance uh, required. If you have a sealed battery, like absorbed glass mat or gel cell, or if you have a lithium type battery, then those are maintenance free and you don't even have to deal with that. But I just wanna show you how simple maintenance is for even a flooded lead acid battery, like our forklift battery here. And so with, the, with our battery and with a lot of batteries, they will have some kind of indicator built into the cells that lets you know when the water level is low. Not all of them do, but some of them do with, with our particular battery. It's got, I guess, it, I'm not sure if it's fiber optics or what, but you can see, I guess you can kind of see how it's lit up a little bit. But if you come over here to this one right here, you'll notice that it's dark and I'm gonna pick it up, pull it out of the water and you'll see it light up. I don't know, yeah, I think you can, it's kind of hard to see, but maybe if we come a little bit more right overhead. Okay, there you go, I saw it that time. Okay, so right now it's down in the water, it's being submerged, so it's dark. As Soon as the water level drops down, you saw it light up there. That's what I'm talking about. This is one of the simplest forms of indicators on batteries, but there's others that are more sophisticated um, even electronic ones where there will be a little LED light that lights up when the water level gets low in the cell. You can do whatever, and of course the simplest form is just a cap and you just look down in there. So um, with our particular indicator, I like to come and check once a month maybe. And seriously, I, this is not something that I check all the time. This is maybe once a month. And if I'm completely honest, it might even be once every couple of months that I come and check the water level. You kind of get a feel for how quickly your battery uses water. Uh, the older they get, the more water they use. But um, anyhow, let's just dive in. And this battery definitely needs watering. It's getting down near the bottom of the safe area. And um, also one thing I should mention is the battery is fully charged right now. We've had a nice sunny day batteries all topped off. That's important because you never want to water a battery when it's discharged, when it's in a discharge condition, because as the battery gets recharged, the water level, the electrolyte level naturally goes up. And so if you fill that battery up with water, when it's in a discharge condition, then it's going to overflow when, you, when it tops off and that's going to cause potential for corrosion on the battery and also dilute the electrolyte and do all kinds of bad things like that. So just remember, wait until the battery is fully charged. If the if you need to, you know, charge it up with a generator or whatever before you water it, but hopefully you can just let the sun do that. And so it's fully charged up and I'm going to water it now. Second thing I should mention is be sure and use distilled water. You're probably familiar with that concept, but 
And as with your car battery, when you're watering your car battery, you don't want to use regular water because it could have minerals and things like that in it that can um, uh, cause, uh, for lack of a better word, kind of like a corrosion type thing to happen to the lead plates where it can build up with minerals in the, in the, on the plates and in the battery case, things like that. Um, so use distilled water to make sure that it's as clean as possible and um, so that your battery has a long life. And I like to have a funnel. There are much more high-tech ways of doing this. I'm kind of a low-tech guy for some things. I've seen automatic watering systems where you can just take a, a water container and it's got hoses that are already tapped into each of the cells and you can just water it from one central point. That's great, and it's probably a really good idea if you have a battery bank that has a whole bunch of cells, but we don't. Ours is pretty small number of cells. We just have 12 two volt cells making a 24 volt battery bank. And so it's pretty easy for me. I mean, especially considering that I'm only watering this thing once every two or three months. It's, it's not a big deal. I haven't seen the need to install an automatic watering system. There's another option that is really handy and low tech. Um, basically with this container, you take the cap off, you pour distilled water in here, screw the cap back on, and then this is spring loaded so that when you, here I'll show you real quick how it works. When you push it, when you put it into the um, cell, you push it down so it's spring loaded, you push it down, when you push it down it allows water to pour into the cell and you'll hear it gurgling in here. It goes kind of slowly, but it will keep adding and keep adding until you stop, until you hear it stop gurgling. When that happens, it's reached just about the right place, right at the bottom of the throat. And I've found it to work pretty well, where once it stops gurgling, pick it up, and lo and behold, there we are at the right water level. So this is a great way to speed things up. Also makes for less mess less spilled water on the battery and everything. And it's a whole lot cheaper than one of those automatic systems. But as you can see, it's been working for me to do this. So this is what I do. So I'm gonna take the cap off here and stick the funnel, make sure there's no junk in there. And stick the funnel in there. Oh yeah, safety equipment. Safety first. I, I'm not very good at safety a lot of times, but I will say, learn from my mistakes. I did one time have a splash of uh, acid come out and hit me in the eye, and that was scary. I, I ran to the sink and washed it out really good, and thankfully I didn't sustain any damage, but um, learn from my mistake. Gloves, I don't often wear them, but I'm doing it for the video because safety first. And, uh, you know, it's not good to get it on your skin. Be sure and wash your hands if you don't use gloves. But the safety glasses are a really good idea. So I'm going to pour it in here. And I just kind of do it off to the side like that and keep an eye. What I'm looking for is there is a plastic throat in the battery that extends maybe an inch down into the battery case, and you wanna take the water up to the bottom of that plastic throat. And then I just pop the battery in, I mean, pop the cap in and we're good. It's also a good idea to take some paper towels and dry this moisture off, so I'll do that here in a minute because um, you don't want to leave water sitting around on the battery. It can cause corrosion. You might see some uh, white kind of film on some areas. A lot of that is from where I sprayed a baking soda solution to neutralize the battery, and I should probably do that again. I'm starting to see a touch of corrosion in some places. You really want to keep up with that because corrosion can, if you leave it there for a long time, it can get out of hand but a baking soda solution 
is really good for neutralizing it and keeping things in check. And that's how simple it is. Then I move on to the next cell, do the same thing. It can be a little tricky sometimes navigating the cables, but you get the hang of it. Get an idea for how much water it takes, like anything else. Practice makes perfect. I don't get a lot of practice though, because I don't do it very often. And if you end up with a maintenance-free battery, you won't do this at all. But maintenance-free batteries cost a lot of money. And I still say forklift batteries are the best bang for your buck. And um, there's definitely advantages to the to the like with some of the lithium batteries and things like that. And if you can afford it, then that's awesome. There's some, some real advantages to it. But if you have limited resources and you're trying to make your budget stretch, then I still am a fan. Good old lead acid batteries. Until we get some good um, sources for lithium batteries that are comparably priced. But anyhow, that's how simple it is to maintain your batteries. Besides this, besides watering the battery, Another piece of maintenance you could do once every year or two would be to wire brush the connections, take all of the connections loose between the cells, take a wire brush and brush it and put some uh, anti-corrosion coating on there, something like that. You know, so you could do that. That would be another piece of maintenance, but it's pretty minimal as you can see. And um, it's been manageable for me at least. The more cells you have, the more of a of a load it becomes and, and the more advantage there would be to a maintenance-free battery. Anyhow, that's all there is to it. <laughs>